Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome. My name is Alex Ziskind. I teach native script courses on nativescripting.com. Now, usually on this channel, I give you quick tips about native script, usually within the project itself. But today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. As you know, most mobile apps don't live in isolation. There's usually some kind of backend involved that your apps can talk to. Whether you've got your backend in .NET or Python or PHP or Node, it doesn't matter. There is a backend that handles your server-side logic and data calls. Having a simulated backend when you're developing your native script application is useful too. This way you get a more realistic experience of developing your app. Today I will show you how to quickly set up a Node and Express server and have our Hello World native script with Angular app fetch data from this server that we're gonna set up. So crack open that editor and let's get started. Let's go out to the command line and I'm gonna use the native script CLI to create a new app using the Hello World Angular template. My app name is Server Players and I'll give it the ng flag. The reason I'm using the Angular template is because it already comes with master details pages and some data already there. So it makes it easier. But you can do the same thing with the native script core or native script view app if you want. I'm gonna pop open Visual Studio Code as my editor here. Our source code lives in the app folder and here's our item components. I'm gonna go back out to the terminal and run this app with the TNS run iOS command, which will start it up in the iOS simulator. All right, so our app is running and you're probably already familiar with it. We have some football players listed here that are coming from the item service. You'll see that in a second. And when you tap on each football player, you'll get to the details page. So all that data is actually hard coded in our item service. Now this is very satisfying to see data in your app right away, but it's not quite realistic, is it? Usually we fetch data from some kind of API. So our items component actually calls this get items function that just returns a plain array that's hard coded. We're about to add a backend where you're gonna get this data from a fetch call via HTTP. Go ahead and open up a new tab in your terminal and just create a new folder called server player server. That's pretty bad naming, I know, but just, let's keep going. Let's go into this directory. And since this is gonna be a node project, I'm gonna use npm to initialize it. The npm init command will just take me through a little bit of a wizard here and ask me some questions. I'm gonna mostly accept all the defaults here. And when that's done, let's open this up in the editor. There's our package.json project file. So here I'm gonna run node and express to serve out data from an API. I'm gonna open up my terminal and we need a couple of packages here. So npm install express, and I'm gonna save that as a dependency. And there it is, it's in my package.json file. Now that's really all you need if you're gonna be just writing pure JavaScript code, but I'm a fan of TypeScript myself, so I'm gonna install a couple more packages to help me out with that. First, I'm gonna install TypeScript itself, which is a development dependency, so it's gonna have the dash dash save dev flag. And when it installs, you'll see it under the new dev dependencies section in my package.json file. I also wanna get a couple of libraries here that have type declarations for TypeScript. I wanna get the types package for Node, and I wanna get the types package for Express. Those are both dev dependencies also. And there they are. Now, as I'm developing the server, I wanna be able to just issue one command that'll compile my TypeScript and start the server. So I'm gonna create this script called start. It's gonna start with a TSC command, which will build our TypeScript code. And then it's gonna run node with the server.js file, which I'm about to create. I'm not really gonna create the JS file. I'm gonna create the server.ts file, and then the JS file will get generated. And finally, I'm gonna help myself out here when I do TypeScript compilations. I'm gonna create a tsconfig file so that I don't need to pass command line parameters to TSC every time. Now, I also have TypeScript installed globally, so I can just go to the command line and I'm gonna run tsc dash dash init, which will initialize the tsconfig.json file for me. All right, so in server.ts, I'm gonna import star as express from the express package. This will give us the express function that we can call to kick off our app. Now I can say app listen, and I'm gonna give a port to listen on. I'll use 3000 here. So when I start this server up, it's gonna listen on port 3000, but it doesn't quite yet have any routes that it's listening on. I'm gonna create one route with the get command. This will be the home route, so just slash. So this will respond to HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 3000 slash. The get function also takes a second parameter that's gonna define a callback. 
and the callback is going to take in a request and a response object. So we're going to do the simplest thing and just send the response with the string hello world with our own special spelling of hello. Sure, why not? There is no server.js file yet. In order to generate it, I need to run the tsc command, which is the TypeScript compiler. So let's do that. And now in order to run it, we can just say node and then pass in server.js to it. I like to test my APIs with a little program called Postman. We'll see that in a minute. But this one is simple. I can just go to the browser and type in the URL. And there's our hello world message coming from the server. We can also use a little handy program called Postman. Like I said, let's crack that open. And you can type in the URL up here. Make sure get is selected as the method. And then you can click send. Oh, and of course, don't forget the port, port 3000. And then we get our message. All right, congrats. That's the basic setup right there. Next, let's return some football players on a different route. By the way, your request and responses have types, so I can specify that right there. And then we need to import these from Express. All right, let's stick with our goal here, shall we? I'm going to go back to item service in our app, and I'm going to take this hard-coded array out of here, and I'm going to paste it into our server code at the top here. I'm just going to make this a constant and convert this to an array literal. And let's roll down here a little bit and create a new route to fetch these players. This is also going to be a get method. It's going to be players route, which is also going to take in a request and a response. But this time we're going to use the JSON function of the response. So I can send that array of players back as a JSON object. Also down here, I'm going to add a little console log message. So we're not sitting and wondering if our server started or not. So our server is currently running. I'm going to press control C to terminate that process. To start it again, we're going to use that handy little script that we've created in the beginning of this video. That's the one that does the TypeScript compilation and starts the server in one command. Let's try that out. npm run start. And there's a little message that says server started. Now let's go back to Postman and test out our new route. Here I'm going to add on players to our path. And there they are. OK, what about the details page? Well, for the details page, we need to get just one player by ID. So I'm going to create a new route for the details page, and it's going to have an ID parameter. Let's get a callback in there with the request and the response. And the ID is going to be on a parameters collection of the request. And also, since our players have IDs that are integers or numbers, you have to make sure you convert this string, which is the parameter ID, to a number. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to find the player if we're looking for the string ID. And now we're just going to look through the items array and find the matching players whose ID matches the parameter and take the first element. We'll set that to the found item variable and use the JSON function to return the found item. Now, since we're not using the watch flag on the TSC command, it's not going to automatically restart. So I'm going to press Control C and restart our server. Let's go to Postman. Let's tack on the ID of five and we get that player back. Let's try ID 20 and we get a different player back. So our API is complete and it's working. Now I want to simulate some kind of network delay, which definitely might happen to you in the real world. So here for our details route, I'm just going to wrap our return statement with a set timeout function. And let's say our network is really bad and it's going to take three seconds to look up our player. Let's kick off our server one more time and let's check this out in Postman. I'm going to tap on send and one, two, three, and then we get an answer. Wow, what a slow network. Now, how do we use this in our app? I'm just going to keep the server running in the background and let's go back to our app code. I'm going to use the fetch module, which is global in native script, to call our new endpoints and return the items. I'm going to set the URL to localhost 3000, which is not going to work quite yet. So this is one of the gotchas I want you to look out for. And that's because I'm on a Mac and on a Mac, I need to use the IP address. This will work fine on Windows. And instead of the item array, fetch is going to return to us a response of a promise type. So we need to go ahead and call the JSON function on that to process it. Now, let's get my local IP address for my Mac. On the terminal, I'm going to issue the command ifconfig and scroll up just a little bit to get your IP address. There it is. I gotcha. So I'm going to use that IP address right here instead of localhost. Same port though. Now for get item, we're going to have a similar situation where we're going to return a promise this time of just one item. So I'm going to copy what we had here in the get items function. By the way, this should be port 3000 players. Make sure you're using the players route to get the items. 
And this one is going to be port 3000 slash players slash ID. So let's append that ID. All right, since we've changed the type that we're returning from these methods, our component is not going to like it. So we just need to fix up the call and call the then function in the component. So that takes care of the master page. Now we also need to do the same thing in the details component. All right, let's see if any of this actually works. I'm going to go over to the app simulator and it restarts and we have our items. Let's tap on a football player and you see that takes three seconds to get the item. Now, if you're using NativeScript core, you're done. But if you're using Angular, you could probably take advantage of the new HTTP client, which has a different return type. It doesn't return a promise, it returns an observable. We're going to turn on HTTP client usage now. And we do that by going to the root app module. And let's uncomment this code right here, this module import, and add it to our imports array. This is the NativeScript HTTP client module, which is a wrapper around Angular's client. This will make the HTTP client available for your services here. So in the item service, we're going to inject this HTTP client into our constructor. Now down here in our get items function, instead of using fetch, I'm going to use HTTP and call get on that. Get is a generic function, so we want to specify what type we're going to return. And that's going to be an item array. This will return to us an RxJS observable now. So let's just change the signature of this method to return an observable. In NativeScript, when you're importing observable, make sure you grab the right one. So in this case, we need the RxJS one. Great. Now we can use this observable in the component. So let's go to the items component. And instead of this items array, I'm going to make this items dollar. And this is going to be an observable type. Let's import that here too. Back down here when we initialize, we're going to set this dot items dollar to the result of the get items function. And the nice thing about RxJS is that I don't need to do anything else. This is just going to be reactive. But that's not really the case, is it? We need to subscribe to this observable. And we do that here in the view with the async pipe. Let's check this out. The app restarts and we get our items. Very cool. Now, one cool thing about running this separately on a server is that you can easily debug that process in your Visual Studio code just by attaching the debugger to the server process. So let's terminate our running process by pressing Control C and let's go to this debugging tab. I currently don't have any configuration set up. So I need to do that. Let's click on this cogwheel up here and select node. That's the environment I want to debug in. This automatically creates a launch configuration file for us and stores it locally in the VS Code folder. There's one more step we needed to do here, which I didn't do. And uh, you'll see this breaking in a second. We'll fix it. Let's go back to the debug tab and tap on this play button here to start debugging. And our debugging breaks. This is the problem that I mentioned to you a few moments ago. The problem stems with how we created this project. In package.json, we've registered index.js as the starting point of our project, but it's actually server.js. So make sure you change that. And because we did that, then when we added the configuration, the launch configuration, and now it says index.js in there too. So we need to change that as well. Whew. Okay, problem is fixed. Let's launch this. All right, no complaints. We're in the code and we're running. Let's take a look at our server.js file. And we can put a breakpoint anywhere here. I'm going to stick a couple of breakpoints, one in each of our routes. Let's go back to the app and I'm going to tap on one of the players. And we pause in the breakpoint. We can examine the ID that we got, which is 6. I can hit F10 to step through the code. And we found the player, which is Dennis Suarez here. Now I can put another breakpoint inside our timeout function. And then I'd have to wait three seconds. And then our breakpoint hits. And finally, when I continue, we get the data in our app. Let's take a look at that again with the simulator side by side. I'm going to go to a different player. And as you can see, there's no data yet. This is where you typically show some kind of spinner icon or whatever your loading strategy is in your UX. And then finally, we get our player. Well, that does it for me today. My name is Alex Ziskind, and if you've enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to this channel. The subscribe button is right over there. And check out our full-length courses on nativescripting.com, where in the pro courses, we use a backend similar to the one we've set up today with a few more features, but you already know some of that. So go check that out. And you can also ask me NativeScript-related questions on Twitter. I'm at Digitalix. And if I answer your question here on this channel, you'll get some swag in the mail. Till next time.